Welcome to the Meant to Be Outdoors podcast, where our goal is to connect listeners to the great outdoors with hosts Brian Hoffmeyer and Ben Brandell. I'm host Ben Brandell, owner of Meant to Be Outdoors, instructor of outdoor skills, and passionate about personal growth. I'm host Brian Hoffmeyer, wildlife biologist and avid outdoorsman. Welcome back to the Meant to Be Outdoors podcast. I'm your host, Brian, with my co-host, Ben. And in today's episode, we are going to be talking about all of the physical benefits of going outdoors. As you can imagine, we are the Meant to Be Outdoors podcast. We advocate for people spending time outdoors, and we are going to give a whole bunch of reasons how it can actually help your body today. Stay tuned. You are going to be so encouraged to spend time outdoors. But before we get started, we need to give thanks. I'm thankful for creativity. Um, There's a lot of people that have creativity. I don't feel I'm one of those. And so when I get around people that, um, whether they can be drawing, drawings, or even just penmanship, just my wife, when she writes a letter is just, it's beautiful. Mine are not. And if I was to live in a world that I built, (laughs) <laughs> it would be so um be very modern yeah a lot of squares uh, really and, square yeah. yeah and so just just thankful that god created other people to um have that creativity from music um to uh, and i'm not a huge fan of arts so like i don't go just enjoy a painting but when i enter into a house that has pictures up and and things up um that what i call decorations it i'm just thankful that other people what you call decorate? I think other people call them decorations too. <laughs> well, but like I don't go to art museums and enjoy right, yes. uh, art in that way. But you know, being in our podcast studio, we don't really have anything hanging up. But when I go home, my wife does, and and I well, we used to have a that. nice poster of our podcast emblem, but can't have nice things. People break them. That's true. Yeah, that's very true. <laughs> that's probably why I don't get to throw a football in the house at home. So I am just thankful for people um, that do. Um. yeah, I'm just thankful for creativity. It's a blessing. Well, I'm right there with you in the camp of not creative and having terrible handwriting. Mm-hmm. So I can't say a whole lot, but I could agree that I'm thankful for those people because of the, the things they create. Obviously, they, they benefit us for whether it's for just enjoying music or art, but I'm not there. So when I see someone draw something, paint something, it is amazing to me. I am so far from it. It's hard for me to believe that anyone can. Like, right. I, I, right. I can't even see carrying a, carrying <laughs> so, a tune in a bucket. Exactly. Yeah, I, I don't even, it's hard for me to fathom that people even have that capability. Mm-hmm. It yep. really is. What I am thankful for are my neighbor's Christmas lights. Oh, but that's because you didn't have to put them because up. Because I didn't have to have the creativity <laughs> or put them up. Right. No, my neighbor, which I have several neighbors that have Christmas lights, but my neighbor. I mean, he really goes all out. He has like these two trees that are made of lights and all these snowflakes and all the lights on the house and then light shooting back at the house. But it's one of those setups where you park out front and you tune your radio to his radio station and everything is synchronized to the song that's playing on the radio. And one, it's it's awesome just to take in. But two, this time of year with the short days and colder weather, it's harder to find things that occupy my family in the evenings, like between dinner, dinner and bedtime. And my family loves to go watch them. Every night after supper, my boys are asking, can we go see the lights? Can we go park by the trees? And it is just an awesome way for my family to spend time together. And I, we have fun. We sing we interact and and we're together. We're not apart. We're not watching screens. Uh, I really am thankful that he takes the time and spends the money to put those up, and he's only doing it for other people to enjoy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I really appreciate that. And without creativity, that wouldn't be there. No, that's what's wild. Is that truly because of his creativity? Because you're telling me he made it. Yeah, I mean he put it all together and yep. and some of that design. And thankful for when people use their gifts for sure. Thankful for yeah. people that are smarter than us. Amen. <laughs> well, in today's podcast, we are talking about the physical benefits. We are going to narrow it down to physical. In several of our episodes, we have brought in some of our favorite points and some of our favorite research that suggests um, this, the spiritual aspect and the mental aspect 
of the health that that brings in from being outdoors. But today we're really going to focus on the physical and and a couple reasons for that, why we're doing this topic today. One being it's wintertime. It can kind of take some extra motivation to want to go outdoors. Even if you are considering yourself an outdoorsman, it takes some extra motivation. You have to put extra layers on, even just something as simple as going to the mailbox or or letting the chickens out. You have to put on an extra layer of clothes, maybe two, maybe three different shoes. If you're just slipping on Crocs, you're probably going to have cold toes. It takes a little more effort, but we want to tell you today that it is worth it, and we're going to give you some of those reasons why. And research has shown that in today's society, in America, the Western culture, we spend 25% less time outside than just 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about 50 or 100 years ago. Than just 20 years ago, we spend 25% less time outside. That is pretty significant. And we're going to talk about why we believe that needs to change. You know, just looking at that stat alone, Brian, I think that stat has increased. Um, You know, after COVID, a lot of businesses have allowed people to work from home. Mm -hmm. Um, with technology, with we'll just we'll use one example, Amazon. You can even buy groceries groceries from Amazon now. I mean, there's less reasons to have to leave your house. Yeah, you don't hardly even have to go out and shop for Christmas presents. You can just have them at your front door. Yeah, yeah, a day if, or two. I mean, it, in theory, you can work from home and purchase everything from home and stay at home now. Yeah, you don't and, even have to walk across the parking lot from your car to the do- to the door of the store anymore. No. <laughs> <laughs> So, Brian, knowing that we spend less time in the outdoors, what is the research saying? What's it telling us about uh, the impact of us staying indoors? Well, b- before we get into everything that we've found, all the research that we found, I want to ask you, Ben, when you spend time outdoors, do you actually feel a difference? Like, do you believe the point that we're trying to make today that the outdoors actually helps you physically? Do you deep down believe that? So what I deep down believe is 50-50 in what I'm going to explain here because this is kind of the whole point of the podcast, but I'm going to share my my point right now that there have been times in my life that I have been so stressed out. I'm talking um, at like a breaking point in my life that the outdoors was not calming and did not help it. And there will be people that that impacts. If if you are absolutely so terrified of spiders and you're laying down and there's spiders – this isn't what we're talking about. There are going to be times in your life when you're outdoors that things are happening around you that you're not going to be in this in this healing moment of what we're speaking of. However, I've had just as impactful moments in the outdoors of healing as I have in pain. And 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 what I'm saying that is is as when I was a guide or or a, a camp director doing different things, there were moments when I was completely in the outdoors nonstop, 24-7 for weeks. and Months. Months. Yeah. And the stress that was upon me because of my responsibilities were overwhelming at times. And so I can't just stand here today and say that just because we were in outdoors, I felt better. And mm-hmm. and there's going to be people that tell you the same thing. I mean, there is ecotherapy happening today where people are so terrified of the outdoors that there's not healing. However, I think the percentage of healing or what we're going to be talking about healing is greater than it is negative. Right. And so my true beliefs are that the more time that you spend outdoors, more healing can take place than to not be going outdoors. But there may be a few times a year that you're outside that you're really uncomfortable and you don't feel good or it makes you uneasy to where your stress levels rise to where now we got stress in the scene when we're trying to get rid of stress. Mm -hmm. And so to combat that, I think it's important to have people with you um, through those those times. Um, The outdoors and then sometimes combined with people can definitely bring amazing health benefits, which I want to get into and, and talk more about. Yeah. Let's talk about some of those those health benefits. And and the first uh, reference that we're going to study here is from UC Davis, UC mm-hmm. Davis Health. Um, and, and they're going to tell us, the first thing they're going to tell us is that being outdoors, this is all research that they have, they have put a lot of time and effort into. They have actually shown 
I mean, I'm going to use the word prove. They have proven these to be true, that being outdoors lowers your blood pressure. Mm-hmm. Well, we, we know that the number one killer is heart disease, and a huge part of that is having high blood pressure. I think, I mean, how many men especially, how many middle-aged men do you know that are on medicine for high blood pressure? A lot. A lot. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I would venture to say that if you put 20 of them in a room, it, the majority of them are going to be, um, it, let's say, 40 plus. And that is something that, that we have to monitor as men as we get older. Now, there are, are other things that are factors like our diets and in amount of exercise overall. But if it's proven that just being outdoors can help you, well, then maybe we should be moving towards adopting more of an outdoor lifestyle. I, I would agree with that. I do want to share, because I stated about 50-50, and, and that's probably not accurate. And what I'm saying, 50% yes and 50% no. Um, but I, there, are, there are family members in my life that have, have high blood pressure, and they spend time outdoors daily. Mm-hmm. And so I'm not saying that they're not healing from it. I'm saying that what would what state would they be in if they weren't going right. outside? They 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 still have high blood pressure, but if they quit spending time outside altogether, how high would it be and how quickly could they decline mm-hmm. um, in their health? Yeah. Um, so it's more like a, a maintenance thing you're yeah, saying. Than a, yeah. yeah, I mean, that, that's, I think it's been, a, it's very beneficial as we're seeing and, and we should continue. But I know that I know that there are there are times that people. Well, I just want to say it this way: I don't want anyone listening today to think that you go outside and all your worries go away. And I, and I think that's my my focus here is that these studies are on our physical body, like what's happening to our our right. body physically. And 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 most of the time, these studies are done where spending time outdoors becomes a pattern in your life. It's something right. that you can do consi- consistently. Right. Correct. It isn't it isn't a okay, you've been in the office and in your house and the only time you've been outdoors is walking from your vehicle right. for the last 6 months and now you go outside for an hour and everything that we're talking about has changed. It Correct. it isn't that. It has to become a Consistent. pattern yeah. in your life and that's what we're really wanting to encourage you to do to, to do today. The second thing, and this is probably, there's going to be a whole bunch of things tied to this. And, and Ben, you mentioned lowering stress, and that really is a focus of spending time outdoors. Um, you know, I asked you, do you believe the outdoors helps you physically? And I'm going to tell you that when I go outdoors, I feel less stressed. Nothing changes except for that I spend time outdoors. It may just be walking in my neighborhood or riding bike with my kids. I feel less stress. Absolutely right. has been that way my entire life. So much so that when I feel stressed, one of the me- how I combat that is to go outside. And sometimes it may just be a walk to the back of my yard and back, and I will feel better. Um, so I, I will attest to this just in my own experience, but UC Davis has found that spending time outdoors lowers your cortisol levels. Now, cortisol is a hormone produced by our body, and it is a stress response. The more stressed we are, the higher level of cortisol we have in our body. Now, there are so many physical things tied to this. Right. Um, the number one thing that I want to bring up is that health scientists believe that there is nothing more detrimental to human health than stress. Correct. Nothing. Not cigarettes, Correct. not alcohol, not drugs. Stress is the number one most detrimental thing to human health. That is astounding to me. So if I can find a way that is simple and affordable, it's free to go outside. Correct. <laughs> and see, that's why I like that you're standing to just to go outside and yeah. spend some time out there. It, and we'll get, we'll talk about some ways at the end. It it doesn't it can be complicated. It can be grand gestures, but it doesn't have to be. And that's that's what I want to share right now. That it doesn't have to be. You know, when I was saying earlier, like that stress. I've been in those stressful situations. I was outdoors. It it didn't take away my stress. It, mm-hmm. it was actually causing more stress. And so what I want to stress here is it's the idea of I need to I need to go take a walk. I need to go take a hike. I need to go 
honestly get some vitamin D. We say that a lot. Mm -hmm. We we talk about that a lot. And it's not this grand idea of I have to go out and live in a van down by the river. Yeah, no. You know, I mean, it's it's you you don't have to be a homesteader for what we're talking about. Yes, you don't really have to change your life. You just have to change some patterns of your life. Right, right, exactly. That that's really all we're saying. Cortisol is also directly linked to the amount of anxiety in your life. And as most of you probably know, because social media and the media in general is going to tell you, people are more anxious and more anxiety medicine is prescribed by a ginormous margin than ever before. And so if you're looking for a way to reduce your anxiety, you need to lower your cortisol levels. And an absolute foolproof way of doing that is to spend time outdoors. Absolutely. Go outdoors your cortisol levels will be lower. There's so many other benefits of having healthy cortisol levels from having the proper uh, sleep rhythms. If you want to go to sleep, if you want to wake up in the morning and go to sleep at night, you need healthy cortisol levels, weight management from our metabolism to uh, being hungry or not being hungry, proper cortisol levels uh, are what establish that as well. And so with that, going outdoors actually helps increase Our metabolism. It does. So if you want to burn more fat, if you want your body to use more of the stored energy that it has, go outdoors. It's better to go outside and sit than it is to sit inside. Correct. Correct. 21% more calories burned by sitting outside versus sitting inside. Mm -hmm. No increase in activity. You're just outdoors. Mm -hmm. That is absolutely incredible to me. I, I can't even... Well, I don't have an explanation, but holy smokes, what more needs to be said? Like, yeah, I mean, the reality is what's taking place here is that your body has to maintain the temperature it wants right. to maintain. Homeostasis. That it needs yeah. to yeah, maintain. And because we have climate-controlled vehicles and houses, there's less of that taking place. When right. we get out, whether it be too hot, too cold, or degrees off, like our body's adjusting to that, and it's, it's working, which is great. Um, that's why it's, yeah, it's good to get outside. Go. Now- Going outdoors and having an activity involved is like level two. Mm -hmm. So you can go outdoors and sit, and that's awesome. But going outdoors and having physical activity with it, this is like level two. And what is crazy about these studies is that more calories are burned. So you can take an activity indoors and do that activity and then take the same activity and do it outdoors with the same person, the, the same test subject, and they burn more calories when they did it outdoors. Again, maybe because of their body trying to maintain homeostasis. But what they also found is when not given any time parameters or intensity parameters, just given the exercises to do, when people go outdoors to do perform an activity, they do it longer and more intense. Mm-hmm. Well, obviously your workout's going to be better if you do it longer and more intense, right? So maybe incorporate, if you are somebody that likes to exercise, if you like to walk, if you just walk on a treadmill, if you do it outdoors you're going to do it faster and longer. That's really good. Yeah. And (laughs) I struggle with running on a treadmill, like something about it, of this stationary running I struggle with. And so when I do have to run- Physically or mentally? Both. (laughs) Both. (laughs) (laughs) But to go out, even on asphalt, concrete, um, it brings, I hate running. So when I have to run or I know I need to run, um, I enjoy going out running on asphalt or concrete more than I do on, on a treadmill, mm-hmm. um, just personally. So I, I get that. I relate to that one. Yeah, you get to actually like wa- watch something pass you, observe squirrels, observe well, yeah, birds, I mean, sights, it, smells, I don't feels. know how much we'll get into this, but it is literally your your senses. I mean, yeah. you're adding, yeah, you're adding smells. I'm. It takes away from sometimes the pain because I can, I can spend my attention, I can give my attention to other things from the animals I'm seeing to... Um, maybe even the neighbor's houses I'm looking at when mm-hmm. I go by, it, it can help to, to take my mind off of the pain. <laughs> I want to, I want to add this in here about ac- activity outdoors. We, we, I'm, I feel like I made it sound like it has to be a planned exercise, a planned workout. It doesn't have to be. It can be chipping golf balls in the backyard. It can be going to play a round of, of disc golf. It can be picking rocks in the yard. Just any kind of activity, movement, physical movement outdoors, is more beneficial than movement indoors. indoors and right. so go, just go out there and, and do something. Right. Go out there and, and do something. It will be beneficial to your body. Next, Ben, you mentioned vitamin D. You know, 
I had mentioned to me this week, um, I asked someone, um, actually my wife's friend, how her sister was doing. And one of the responses was, oh yeah, good, but struggling with this a little bit. And the doctor's prescribing vitamin D to help. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, if you go outdoors, (laughs) our bodies are designed to absorb that. Right. Now, I understand it's winter and the, our rays of sunlight are not as intense, and so we don't get as much, and there are other medical conditions within people's bodies that can reduce that. It's different from males and females as well. However, I had the thought of, man, I wonder if doctors are prescribing vitamin D more now than they used to. You know what I found? There's a lot of people worried that doctors are over-prescribing vitamin D. Really? So they are prescribing it like crazy because it helps with so many things. Right, right. And people aren't spending enough time outdoors. So even even if they're not passing a test saying, oh, man, they are a little low on their vitamin D levels, doctors are prescribing this. It is so beneficial to so many areas of our physical health. Well, what I'm going mean, to tell bones, you is- Bones, everyone always talks about bones, bones. for sure. That's why I'm supposed to drink my milk, yep. right? But what else besides just but, bones? But the only reason it's in milk is because milk is, we've added it to it. It's fortified with vitamin D. Right. Our bodies are built to absorb it from the sunlight. That is the way God made us to get it. So why not get it from the source the way that we're supposed to get it? Go outdoors. Let your skin be exposed to the sunlight. I, it doesn't take a whole lot of time. It's only like, I think it's 10 minutes of sun exposure and your body can absorb the amount of vitamin D that it needs for the day. That's a pretty good incentive for me, I think. It is, yes. And, now, and you mentioned bones. Mm-hmm. There are other things. What are some other things that vitamin D, that our bodies have to have vitamin D for? I know blood cells. Um, I mean, our, my, my health, which, which I'm always going to reference is my immune system. Mm-hmm. Uh, my immune system, when it gets low, which... Which is your, your body's ability to fight pathogen. Correct. Right. Yeah. And... and so everyone always thinks vitamin C, vitamin C, vitamin C. Vitamin D plays just a bigger of a role, if not a bigger role in our immune system. So if you want to be more resistant to getting sick, go outdoors. Next. They have proven that having proper levels of vitamin D over your life reduces the amount of cognitive loss. Now it's no lie that as humans age, our brains don't work as good as they did when we were young. So if you want it, your brain to be as f- functional as it can be and last as long as it can while you're in your time on earth, spending time outdoors, letting your body absorb natural vitamin D, not prescribed through a pill, absorb it naturally, you will reduce your cognitive loss as you age. That is huge incentive for me. Yeah. Maybe that's why I need to move to Florida. That's why a lot of people move to Florida. <laughs> is, that, is that why everyone retires I, I, in Florida? I'm guessing. I'm that's guessing. the secret that everyone's been keeping. <laughs> yeah. We got to go get our sunlight so our brains still work. Mm-hmm. Do we get our vitamin D? We got to move to Florida. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Yep. This that makes sense to me. I I never thought I'd move to Florida, but you just convinced me. <laughs> you just convinced me right now. You know, we've already mentioned one aspect of the cardiovascular system, which was lowering the blood pressure. It is also proven through research that spending time outdoors lowers your heart rate. A lower heart rate over time. Obviously, if, you're, if your heart doesn't have to beat as many times over the course of your life, your heart's going to last a little longer, hopefully, right? Hopefully. <laughs> hope that, I do <laughs> hope that's idea. how it works. Yeah, That's the idea behind that. Um, so if you, and I feel these times, these times of, I don't know if you want to call it angst, um, but sometimes you're just sitting there indoors and you're like, man. I feel like my heart's racing. Mm -hmm. And if you go outdoors, take a deep breath, open your eyes, let the sunlight hit your skin, you can almost, I I shouldn't say you, I will speak for myself, I can feel my heart rate lower. Now, I haven't done, I haven't put this hypothesis to the test. They've proved it through their studies, but we have heart rate monitors on our watches. We ought to do that sometime, just a, a relaxed state indoors, take our heart rate on our watch and then go sit outside for five minutes in the lawn chair and see if we actually lower our heart rate or not. Well, I'm going to know. I, I can already tell you the answer because if you, I was to go do that right now, I'd take a nap. 
Right. So <laughs> I'd fall asleep. <laughs> right. But, but it's so relaxing. It is. It is. Right. I, I love napping outdoors. Mm-hmm. Sometimes when I get the opportunity to nap, I actually go out in my hammock here at my house, whether it's on my deck or, or out in my yard to nap because I can get so relaxed out there. Right. Correct. And I know you're going to cover some more here, but I, I want to talk about the responsibility aspect because there are a lot of people that work outdoors and they, they may not relate to what you're saying. And it's because there's a responsibility upon you to complete what you need to complete. Mm -hmm. And what I find is, is when, when I used to work indoors in an office and I was in an office with no windows, um, it was all fake light. I would, I would get that high, that, that tension of like, man, I'm just, I'm struggling in here. Almost feel like your muscles are cramping. Yeah, Yeah. Just, yes. Uh, I mean, my hands are doing it right now. I'm like, balling them up because I remember just that feeling of I've got to get out of here for a minute and that's what I would do I would go outside maybe two minutes but it was enough to like prepare myself to go back in again Mm -hmm. and and that's what we're talking about here like uh, you know when you're at home and you're indoors and you're like man I just need to get out for a minute that's that's some of what we're talking about get out for a few minutes spend a few minutes out there now those that that are spending a lot of time out there I haven't found a study, but there's a difference of when you work outside all day, you may not experience these these feelings that we're talking about. But when you call it a day and you come inside mm-hmm. and you maybe eat your supper or you, you, you take your shower and you get ready for bed, like my sleep was always better. I, oh, yeah. I, I was like coming down from the day, but it was – so much different than than when you're in an office all day going home to go to bed. Mm-hmm. Um, you felt, um, I don't, can't even think of the word, like ready for bed, yeah. really tired, but feeling good. And there's a difference there. And that's what I want to share that even if you're outside, you, you are reaping these benefits, even when you don't feel them in the moment, if you are stressed and you have this responsibility and you're getting tasks done from road workers to construction people. But at the end of the day, when you get home, I'm going to tell you, you feel better than when you've worked in an office all day and you get home. Mm -hmm. There's a difference there. Yeah, I have spent several years in jobs where I worked outdoors every day, and I loved it every day and Mm -hmm. felt all these awesome feelings, except for the summer and the winter when I was trying to either cool down. Yeah, they're brutal. It's brutal. It it can be really brutal. Yeah. Um, But those times when your body's not fighting, not fighting to just be warm or, or, or cool down, it is awesome to work outside every day. So you I used to do uh, prescribed burns, and you would do those in the summertime. So summertime's what ninety, what ninety <laughs> degrees, and you're and you're trying yeah. to burn on top of that, a right? Pres- a prescribed fire in August can be pretty intense, and you have to wear the fire retardant clothing. So you're wearing long so sleeves and, and long pants. It's kind of like hauling hay in the summer when you're wearing long pants and long yeah. jeans. It can be pretty br- brutal, and you have to be intentional about how much water you take. But I could hardly drive home. I was so tired and calm. And right w- when you got home. Oh, you I, crashed out. I couldn't even make it to bedtime. You didn't need melatonin. No, no. You didn't need magnesium. I didn't need anything to you go didn't to sleep. Need, you, you were ready for bed. Right. And and I was always, like, my body weight was always very healthy. I, I, right. didn't, even, I didn't even really work out a whole lot at that time because right. I was, you, you get the physical activity from being outdoors. Your right. body is, is burning those calories. Your metabolism is increased. Uh, it is. It, it's good. I've also had a job before where I would spend maybe a couple days or a week in the office and then a couple days or a week in the field outdoors. And I, oh, I could n- not wait for those field days. I could not wait for those days out right. of the office. Right. It, you know, it, it was nice, I guess, to, to be able to balance those back and forth and have a little of both. But I was always so excited, like, yeah, tomorrow's a day in the field. Um, and, and so I, I, I personally, and it could just be, um, it could just be me. I'm sure there are people that would hate having a job where they worked outdoors every single day. And it can be taxing um, in today's world where we have a lot of advanced clothing and shoes. It does help. Um, but those extreme temperature months, whether it be hot or cold, does make it tough. But uh, it is more enjoyable than working indoors personally. Absolutely. Yeah. And what we're encouraging of those listening that do have that fear for the outdoors or they do hate the cold months or the super hot months, you're still you still need to find time to get out of your home to get out of that mm-hmm. office, um, whether you're adding that extra coat, um, whatever it takes to to get out for a few minutes into this thing we call creation. Yes. Yeah. 
So you mentioned when you used to sit in the office every day under the halogen lights and you just felt like this this tension. Tight ball. Tight. <laughs> well, this, this study from UC Davis actually shows that when you go outdoors, that tension in your muscles that you feel is actually real. Your muscles are actually tight. When you go outdoors, your body releases that tension from your muscles. So you probably just actually feel better. Less aches and pains. Uh, cortisol is also uh, linked to inflammation. So if you're having healthy levels of that, you're going to have less inf- inflammation in your body. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. We're just sharing some of the ones that we have found and experienced. I'm sure if there was a real deep dive in to maybe some biochemistry uh, rates that they found through blood draws and things, I'm sure it, it is even more. Uh, but obviously, people love getting massages, getting that tension out. You can just go outdoors. You don't even have to ask anybody for the massage. <laughs> just let the sunlight do it for you. There you go. <laughs> you know, the exercise from being outdoors, it, it keeps us strong and healthy, right? I, I mentioned I didn't have to lift weights and, and run on treadmills and stuff when I worked outside every day. So if you can go outside, you should, because even if you are not someone that works out, exercises, it it isn't for everybody. Some people absolutely hate it and, and don't even have the time to plan it in their life. If you can just go outside, you are going to get some of that muscle building and some of that it, it helps keep strong bones as well through the vitamin D. So if you want a strong body and you're having a hard time finding time in your life to exercise, go outdoors and you'll probably end up finding that you walk around and you get some of that exercise. Anyway, chronic diseases, whether it be heart disease, diabetes, there's so many out there that people suffer with. It, it's terrible. It really is. Uh, my family members, your family members, we, mm-hmm. we know people across the board, and maybe even us one day, we don't know, um, spending time in nature, and I'm using the word nature here because this is the word that the the study actually used. They didn't say outside or outdoors. They actually said nature. So that may be actually removing yourself from an urban environment. Mm -hmm. It would be the distinction there. Spending time in nature has proven to reduce the risk of chronic diseases, including the number one killer of humans, heart disease. Right. Just go, you don't, it, there's nothing grand about it. Just being in nature can prolong your life. Right. Matter of fact, I've got a study. This was done, and this was actually in 1984 by Roger, I'm going to say Ulrich. 1984? He, this was from the 1900s? Yeah, this ain't even today's, oh my today's gosh. studies. It's how, it's how, well, I mean, truth is is always true. I mean, it's <laughs> 1984. We're we're both born in the 80s. It seems like forever ago. Well, it's it? it's before I was born. Is it Nate Bargatze that that says he feels like he has to tell everyone I'm from the I'm 1900s. from the 1900s? <laughs> well, we are, buddy. We are. Uh, but his study it was actually at Texas A and M University. He published a study of gall bladder surgery patients, and he was actually comparing them to where they were at in their rooms. So the patients that could see out the window and could see the green garden, the grasses, the trees, versus the patients that were in rooms that you could only see the brick wall through. Mm -hmm. He found that the patients that had that beautiful view of the natural environment spent fewer days in the hospital, which I thought that's incredible that there was a difference. They also used less medication Mm. during their stay. That was in 1984. I mean, yeah. this information has been around. We're we're not sharing anything. We're new not here. sharing anything new. Yeah. It's just we really want to bring to to light like how amazing God is and in and, and in His creation. It's important to be to go outside, be in nature. It is important to be outdoors. And, we're, and I'm not against medications, and we use those. However, I feel that we have gotten to a point where we quickly turn to the medications. Right. Um, you know, from the vitamin D pills um, to maybe even the Sudafed, right. like like you've had to been on. <laughs> um, but first, go out into his creation. See if that vitamin D, see if that sun, see if that, that fresh air calms you down maybe before you think about the ibuprofen or... Mm-hmm. Maybe some of those other medications yeah. you're you're seeking. Yeah, that's um, a good point. Even some that. of our our tension headaches that we get. If, right. if if our muscle tension can be released from going outdoors, then maybe 
we could avoid having to take Tylenol or ibuprofen to, to get rid of that headache. Take a bottle of water, drink that water outdoors and, exactly. and just relax for a minute. There's been times where I needed to make phone calls and I was, I had the freedom to use my cell phone at my, one of my past jobs. I would go outside because I love to pace. Mm-hmm. And so it allowed me an opportunity to spend time out there while I was knocking out my phone calls. I could pace, I could talk. It was great. Um, you may not have that luxury, but if you do go try it. Well, just candidly, Ben, let, let's share with our listeners something that we go through. I mean, there are days, uh, our office, our podcast studio is is in a room in my basement of mm-hmm. my home mm-hmm. where we're recording right now. And there are days uh, where, you know, Ben, we're not doing well. You and I aren't doing well. We're discouraged with yeah. things that have happened. We run a couple different businesses, so there's kind of things coming at us all the time, press family. And sometimes you and I can, can get into these funks and these talks and most of the time, one of us will stop and say, you know what, we need to go outdoors. And we may just go walk to the neighbor's pond. We may shoot a basket in the driveway. There's been Sometimes times... we just go out there and pr- say a prayer together. Yeah. But there... being out there, it gets us over it every single time. It's never not worked. There's times we're just going out. We've actually been silent. I didn't say, hey, let's go. It's just like we're at the state of, we've got to we got to step out. I've just went to your swing set mm-hmm. and set in your, your kid's. Well, it's, yeah, my kids. It's not for me. Well, I mean, it's it's <laughs> it's big enough to to definitely hold an adult. It is it's, a, it's it's my kids' week. It's set. it's it's built. It's homemade built. It's yeah. not when you buy at the store. Um, but yes, uh, just spent some time swinging um, and thinking. Mm-hmm. And when that sun hits you there, I mean, it does begin to calm you. I have I've taken some naps there as well in those moments of. <laughs> Of what do I do here? Uh, it's there has it's been great. a couple of days where I thought, where did Ben go? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's in the swing. <laughs> but you always you always come back. That's right. Better than than when you left, and mm-hmm. I think that's because you were outdoors. You know, we are designed. We don't, a lot of us don't live this out. There are more sleep issues today in humans than ever before. We are designed by God to wake up when it's light outside and to sleep when it's dark outside. That is the way our bodies are designed that could be easily proven by our adrenal system, how our body releases hormones for sleep and for wake. Easily, easily proven. Now, our bodies produce less hormones that keep us awake. Excuse me. Our body produces correct hormone levels to establish proper circadian rhythms in our bodies the more time we spend outdoors. So if you get outdoors and just let your body work like it was designed to do, you're going to be able to sleep better. There are a few physicians that I have found online that actually suggest one of the first things you should do in the morning is either open the window, open the curtain, and let the sunlight hit your face or actually step outside is the next step, regardless of the temperature, and let your body know, let your eyes, all of your senses say, hey, I'm up, it's daytime, start doing the things that your body needs to do. Um, And then at night, don't go inside too early. If you go put yourself in a dark room at 3.30, 4 in the afternoon and you stay there till dark, your body doesn't know it, it, it. The light sensors, everything in your body doesn't know when to produce the right hormones for sleep. So use the outdoors to establish your sleep patterns because that is the way God designed it. And that's that's a powerful one. We used to gig suckers. Um, a group of us used to do that. We still still gig today, but we don't get together. Um, this was on like New Year's, so we'd be going in, in January. It's usually yeah, it was we'd bring in the New Year's mm-hmm. together. Um, and I remember we, we pulled an all nighter, we gigged all night long and it was probably about that four thirty. we put the boat up, we were cold, we started a fire. And as we were hanging out on that fire, we were pretty exhausted, but we were trying to bring in this, this daylight to this, this next day. And I'm telling you when that sun came up, you could see the sun, but it, the rays of it wasn't hitting you mm-hmm. yet. But as soon as those rays started hitting you it woke me up even though i had not slept right it began to wake me up right your body knew what it was supposed to do yeah it was it was unreal i mean we 
we didn't. We actually worked hard that night. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's a lot of work to gig in, and it's cold. So our bodies are working overtime, but. Um, but yeah, there's, there's truth in that. that. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. You know, to close this out, we just went over a lot of benefits, physical benefits to your body by going outdoors. Ben, you mentioned that it could be kind of overwhelming for people to even think about going outdoors. Some people are not comfortable to spend time outdoors or they may say, well, what am I supposed to do when I do go out there? Okay. Yeah. I can step out onto my deck. Am I just supposed to stand there? Well, let's provide our listeners with a few simple ideas and concepts that they can consider when when thinking about spending time outdoors, things yeah. that they can do. Yeah, these tips these tips are going to help. I want to bring some clarity to where my viewpoint is on this before we we give you these clear tips because we've we've used the words like nature. We talk about this restorative power. We talk about this healing that takes place when you when you go outdoors and. I want to be very clear that the word nature and nature in itself has no healing. Mm-mm. All of everything that we're talking about is coming from a source and it's from our creator, yep. God, the father, Yahweh, Jesus Christ. God created you and he created the outdoors. And I think because we are both his creation, that pairing those two things together is why we see all these health benefits. It, it is another sign of nature pointing to him. Uh, and the Bible says that. Yeah. And where, uh, where is it that it says that? Romans one twenty. I'm going to read it real fast. It says, For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world mm. in the things that have been made. And it goes on to say, so they have no excuse. Right. But with that scripture, what I want to share there is that God's character is is of healing. I mean, he is a healer. Mm-hmm. That is That is his character. And... <laughs> When you go outdoors, just his character alone is healing, mm-hmm. right? But when you combine that with seeking him, some can call it meditation. Um, we can even get into prayer in that. When you seek him in those moments, I believe more healing occurs, whether that be your stress levels going away, um, true physical healing. Mm-hmm. I want to share in there also, though, that one of my tips here is looking at what Jesus did. Jesus spent time alone with God the Father in the wilderness. He even encouraged his followers to do the same. Right. There's power in that. There, there's so much power in that, that that Jesus, our Savior, is telling us, hey, you need to go spend time with the Heavenly Father in the wilderness. It wasn't just go home and pray. It was be out here with him and to get away from other people. And that's that's kind of that tip that when you are feeling those feelings, anxiety, dread, doubt, who are you around in those moments? If you're in your house with your family and and you need to step out, step out. Step out and take a few minutes outside. Get reset. But there are times when I am in some bad places and just going outdoors, I may need to bring a friend like Brian along. I, I need him to come out with me. Matter of fact, today we were... We were trying to plan some stuff and Brian's like, let's go, let's go take a hike and, and let's go pray. And we did that together. Mm-hmm. You know, that was beneficial in the moment. And so I truly believe if you ask God in the moment to reveal to you what you need, he's going to do that. And that's that first tip. We're going to give you tips, but first go to him. Yeah. Go to him, seek him first. Agreed. And in that then begin to listen to what he says. If he doesn't say anything to you, then try some of these tips that we're about Absolutely. to share. Absolutely. You know, I love to read my Bible, but sometimes I really, really struggle. Like, I struggle. I am reading the words, but my mind is thinking about everything except what I'm reading. Man, that's, that's, when I get mm-hmm. into that moment, are tough days. the only thing that I have found to combat that is to take my Bible and to go outside. If I just go sit on a stump in my backyard, sometimes it's just a chair on my deck or my front porch, sit on the front step, for some reason, when I do that, I'm able to let all that other stuff go, and I'm actually able to comprehend what I'm reading in his word. And I've never, I don't think there's any explanation for that except for that it, it is, we are his creation. And, yeah. and you go be in his creation, and all that stuff goes away. And so that is my fix mm-hmm. when I'm so distracted that I can't read in my home. Mark six thirty one through 32 is where Jesus says to his disciples, 
come away by yourselves to a secluded place and rest a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's why. Yeah. You get, you're actually getting rest there. Yeah. That's why. He's, yep. it, just him telling us to go do it is enough. Mm-hmm. Whether we, even if we didn't understand that vitamin D was a need for our bodies, because in Genesis it tells us we were made from the earth. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we need to be out there because we were made from it. But just Jesus telling us to go out and do it is enough for us mm-hmm. to go do it. And that comes from Mark six thirty one. All and, right. Ready for some tips? Hit me. Outside of God's word, these are just our tips for all of you listeners to spend time outdoors. The number one, and on my list here, this is the only one that I have written in all caps. Put the phone down. If you go for a walk, and I see it all the time, particularly from, I'll say, teenagers here in my neighborhood, they're out walking, which is awesome, but they're literally playing games or texting or scrolling social media on their phone. All the stuff that stresses you out, all the stuff that makes you feel anxious, why are you taking it with you to the place where you're trying to get away from it? Take your phone. It's safe to have it. So if something happens, you can call, but put it down. Please put it in your pocket. Put it on silent. Don't answer it. Just tell somebody where you're going and go out there and enjoy being outdoors for being outdoors. You don't always have to be watching and listening to something. Yeah, the fastest way to do that isn't to turn your phone off. Put it on airplane mode. That way you can still use the functions. Maybe you want to take pictures. Um, but none of that stuff will come through to distract you. Mm-hmm. And then in a moment's notice, if you really need to make a call, you can hit the airplane mode and turn that back off, and, and you get your signal back pretty quick. Absolutely. So that's a, that's a tip there for you. Um, put it down. We're not saying to put it away, but we're saying put it down. Um, a lot of times when I'm just going outside with my boys here around the house, I leave my phone in the house. Yes. Because I can run in and get it if I need it. I leave it in the house. Uh, and You'll call and be like, why didn't you answer? I was, I was outside. I know. I know. <laughs> Sometimes you have to take the watch off too and leave it. You know that that watch will be synced and and you're still connected to that phone. So be just careful. smack it. Just smack it. <laughs> smack that watch. Um, but some other things that that getting outdoors isn't always easy when you have kids because that is more work for you, mm-hmm. um, especially in these winter months coming up. You know, I I still want to encourage my kids to get outside. It is easy when it snows to get them hyped up, to get dressed up, to go. But when there's no snow and they still have to get dressed because of that cold wind, it is tough. Um, So sometimes I have to make a game just to get them dressed, just so we can go spend a little time out there. But something that I have found is I like to combine activities. So, you know, if I'm going to hike, I'm, I, I want to go hike for a purpose. Right. I have a hard time just being like, you know what, let's just, just go outside B, and walk yeah. around. And, and I struggle with that. Um so I combine it, um, whether it be something, I, a scavenger hunt I do with my kids. Um, you know, in the spring, one of my absolute favorite things to do is mushroom hunt. Mm-hmm. And I get to go out and hike and hike and explore. And it's a lot of walking and hiking and up and down hills. And look for fungus gold. I'm looking gold. for these fungus gold, you fungus know. And gold. so they kind of have that double purpose. But walk, get out, walk, hike, find reasons to, here's, here's, an, here's another tip. Me and my family, we went out just walking our subdivision, and we were kind of getting bored. The kids were kind of like, what can we do while we do this? So I created, the, uh, and I, I say I created it. It's something that came to me in the moment. It's very similar to other games. It's, it was called the Alphabet Game, and as we were walking, you had to find A through Z as a team because um, there wasn't enough letters for all four of us to find it individually. So it was as a whole team, we had to get through A to Z, and we adapted it as we went. Like when you get into the weird ones, the, you know, your Q's and U's, uh, if you couldn't find those letters around, it was find an object that started with that or, you know, whatever it was. And it gave us, uh, something else to focus on while we were walking together, but it was fun. It was a fun Mm -hmm. activity to do. You know, sometimes, especially when you're alone, just walking is enough, right? Just walking is enough. It's it having that quiet time, uh, just taking a walk. It doesn't have to be complex. If you don't even have a safe place to walk on the road or a sidewalk, just walk around your yard. Walk laps around your house. It doesn't have to be for an hour. It can be for 10 minutes. Uh, it is worth doing. You can still get a lot of these benefits from simple things like that. Something that I love all the way back from when I was a child, I love to bird watch. 
I love to see birds and identify what species they are. So maybe a bird book, maybe you could use your phone for that. There's a lot of ways to identify them on your, but I love, you don't even have to have binoculars. Just go and see what birds you can see. The beauty of bird watching is birds are everywhere. It doesn't have to be at a park. It doesn't have to be at the Grand Canyon. You can go anywhere Mm -hmm. and go bird watching. You can just do it right in your own backyard and it's a great way to get outdoors. So even if it's just your lunch break, at your office, walk down the sidewalk. Most of the time, you are going to come back and be more productive after spending time outdoors. Actually, I'm not going to say most of the time. That's the whole mental aspect we didn't get into. It is actually all the time. The mental side is actually more astounding than I think the physical side. Maybe that's another whole podcast right. topic, getting into Correct. that side of it. You are going to be more productive at work. Research shows it if you spend time outdoors. So just take a little break. Save five minutes of your lunch break to go for a walk and, and see a few birds Outdoors, if you like to read, one of the most peaceful and productive places to read is underneath a tree outdoors. So no physical activity. You don't have to exert anything. Just find a tree, sit on your bottom, lean up against it, and read your book. You probably end up being so comfortable you fall asleep, even if it's a good book. But try that sometime. Read it outdoors rather than inside. Yeah, uh, the studies, there are so many studies that we've talked about, and there's so many more that we haven't even talked about. But one that I came across was even looking at the inner cities where there there weren't really any green trees. Mm-hmm. And the comparison between just having a park next door to these, I'll just call them subdivisions versus right. not, the benefits of just going to your park. Just stepping out, walking down the sidewalk and get to your park um, was more beneficial than places with no trees, no grass, right. all concrete. Um, so you could create some opportunities for your families to go out to these parks, to these places to do service projects if you really wanted to. Um, but at the end, end of the day, just a few minutes of taking your family to the park and swinging is more beneficial than... Planning a way to serve other people that's outside. It. Now yep. that's next level. Right. Because you're going to get the gratification of... Of serving, I and mean, we are built to serve. God was a servant. We're created in His image. So if you can go do a service project, whether it's just picking up trash on the highway with friends or family outdoors, I think everything's just going to be amplified. All these benefits are just going to be really amplified, and you're going to probably feel awesome when you're done. A lot of us have an old bike in our basement. Mine's not old. Oh, well, it's old, but I it's not dusty. It's probably got a few cobwebs <laughs> on it. It's probably got a little dust. A lot of us have bikes that are hung upside down or sitting on flat tires. Dust them off. Take it for a spin, even if it's just to the mailbox and back at the end of your driveway. What you usually, what I usually find when I get on my bike, I don't think I want to ride it, but then I get on it and I ride it, and I'm like, all right, I'm going to go a little farther, a little That's farther. Good, yeah. A bike is a great way to spend time outdoors and get exercise uh, and have a little fun, too. It is still fun to ride a bike, even for adults. Now, here's one, and I feel weird even kind of saying this, but walk your dog. Take your dog for a walk. Some people are like religious dog walkers. And what I mean by that is like if the clock dings seven, them and their dog are going out the door, they're going for a walk. Now, it is also known we have more overweight dogs than ever before. I'm sure you probably know somebody that has an overweight dog. You know what? I personally have an overweight dog. But take your dog for a walk. It will be beneficial to them and to you. Dogs thats dogs are meant to be outdoors, sniffing, smelling, doing their thing. So take your dog for a short walk. It will benefit both of you as well. Ben, I think our, our last tip here is uh, one you've kind of shared already, and that's to make it social. Mm-hmm. You, you mentioned that we go outdoors together sometimes. Uh, with not really an agenda except just to go out and be with God and and pray. But invite a neighbor, invite a friend. Now you're helping someone else bring health into their life, but you also are now adding in the accountability factor, which is going to end up leading you to be more consistent and actually bringing this to be a pattern in your life. Yeah, we're social human beings, and so um, there are times when we should spend with our our Heavenly Creator, a social being, and there are times when we should invite others um, to have social time with them and to, to really all gather um, to have that social time with Christ. And, and how even more powerful it is to do it in the outdoors um, than it is just inside a church, right? right? So find those times, find those opportunities. Yeah. Oh, 
a, a walking buddy. I know a lot of times people just find someone that, hey, do you do you want to start walking and exercising? And all that person needed was for someone to ask them. And now you are making a new friend and building a new relationship and you guys are getting healthier together. It really is a beautiful thing. The last thing I would say over kind of overcompassing all of these simple tips to get outdoors is plan and schedule it. If you're going to leave it up to your own fruition just to do it when you feel like it, what's going to end up happening is that you're never going to do it. It's going to be like a New Year's resolution that you do once or twice or here and there, and you're not going to experience the real benefits of having it be a pattern in your life. Maybe even plan a big annual trip, a a nature trip. There are a lot of beautiful national parks in our country. We are really truly blessed in America to have the national parks that we have. Plan one every year. If if you can fit that into your schedule and your time, maybe even kind of a, a sabbatical type, view it that way and really get yourself refreshed and built back to physically healthy to to be who you need to be for, for God. Absolutely, Brian. Those are really, really good tips. Now, Ben, do you have any personal testaments to spending time outdoors and how you have seen it affect you positively physically? Yeah, I've seen it impact me positively. I've also seen it impact others positively. Yeah. Um, When I used to, I used to have the opportunity to take at-risk youth out um, to do different trips uh, from rappelling to to paddling to the one I want to share, which was um, we would ride 150 miles on what was called the Katy Trail. And it was an old railroad that they took the railroad out, put in some gravel, and now you could ride your bikes on it. And it was it was a part of these groups of kids. Uh, it was their therapy. They, they had to complete these different things for their therapy. Um, and I'm going to tell you, it was the hardest, hardest thing that I've ever done in my life in regards to being responsible in guiding these types of trips because the kids didn't want to be there. But seeing not only that that physical side of of feeling better but their attitudes their attitudes when we would f- complete these trips um the transformation um <laughs> it was undeniable oh i mean ben you have told me stories literally about how starting the trip there were some of them that wanted to kill you yeah. and when you were done you guys were dang near friends yeah bonded yeah yeah and and seeing then then just how God uses those relationships first. Second, the impact of being in the outdoors, mm-hmm. this this fear that comes, yeah. but also then this, I'm capable, I am an agent of change, I can persevere and push through this, to see them come out the other side of that, only can that happen in the outdoors. Correct. I mean, if, if when you place someone in the indoors to try to, to recreate this. It's too safe, too comfortable. Yeah, yeah. it is. And then also... Now, understanding all the other benefits from the vitamin D. Mm-hmm. All the other things that were going on in their body that you didn't even know. Correct. Yeah. That, that I wasn't even in that charge of. Research right? is showing <laughs> yeah, us. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing. Um, but it helps explain why you saw this change in these yes, individuals that absolutely. were really, really hurting. You know, mine are not near as deep as that, but they are what I have experienced. And one is just as simple as when I have a cold, like if it's hunting season and I have a cold, and I just can't seem to get things loose and moving. You can't hardly breathe, you know? Well, Uh, then all of a sudden I go outdoors and we take a little hike. Then I'll realize, you know what? I can breathe all of a sudden. Being outdoors like opens all of that up. I feel like it helps me get over my illnesses and my colds. And that is just a personal experience for me. I really feel like it helps. Well, I mean, your nose definitely will start running. Yes. (laughs) So if you're locked up, get out there. Yeah. You may not even know you have a runny nose, but you go spend some time in the cold. It's gonna <laughs> You'll have one. Uh-huh. And you kind of hinted at the sleep. We talked about all the sleep benefits, but man, I love how good I sleep when I have been spending time outdoors. Even if it's just fishing on the boat, which seems like not that physical of activity because you're not hiking, you're not doing a whole lot. You're just kind of staying in there fishing. Mm-hmm. I am always so tired, but you, you kind of tried to put words to it earlier. It's like a calm tired. It right. isn't an anxious, tired. It isn't right. like I'm so tired of feeling this way. Or it is just a calm, gratified, tired, and I always sleep so good. I just truly feel happier when I spend time outdoors, and that may be just personal to me because I love. I, I am such an outdoorsman. It's been such a huge part of my life from 
really birthed. It really has. And, and so it may be a little personal, but I truly feel happier the more time that I spend outdoors. You know, that gives you purpose. Mm. And hopefully after listening to this podcast, this information gives you purpose to go out for that purpose. Mm -hmm. You know, spending time outdoors, completing whatever you want to complete, whether it be just a walk, a hike, a backpack, a bike ride, a fishing trip, a hunting, there's purpose in that. And that should be enough. Like I want to give you the permission to go outdoors. I'm giving it to you now. Have the permission. You have the permission to go outdoors that is purpose enough. Yeah. We gave you permission, so go do it. We have pretty much shown you through research that being outdoors makes you smarter, it makes you stronger, and it makes you more spiritual. And that is a version of me that I really want to be. There's a saying that I want to end with. We are human beings. We are not human doings. So get outdoors and just be with God. You don't have to be doing. Get out there. You will You will feel better. If there's any way that Ben and Brian at Men's Be Outdoors can help you do that, please reach out to us, m2beoutdoors at gmail.com. You can message us on Facebook, on Instagram, follow those accounts as well. We'd like to share some of our adventures, some of the classes we're teaching on there. We have a Meant to Be Outdoors podcast Q&A page that we post on sometimes. If you have any podcast topic ideas, that's a great place to leave those. We are going to be back with a brand new episode next week, and we hope that you remember between now and that time that you are meant to be outdoors. Thank you for listening to the Meant to Be Outdoors podcast, hosted by Brian Hoffmeyer and Ben Brandell. Please help us by subscribing. Also, follow along on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook.